Hello and welcome you are watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra and with me somebody truly special. Dr. Arvind Parangariya joins in. He's the chairperson of the 16 Finance Commission of India. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for being with us on Business Today and in this conclave. It's a true honor to speak to you. And of course, who better than you to tell us about the state of the economy in India right now? Of course, we've recently had, uh, you know, good set of numbers come about 8.4%. Everybody is celebrating that. But I want to ask you, has India truly realized its potential at 8.4 percent or do we have a long way to go forward from here? Uh, well, you know, this 8.4 percent really is uh, for the third quarter, yeah. right? And for the year as a whole, it's 7.6 percent. Yeah. So it's pretty wonderful numbers uh, 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 and very much uh, where I was expecting it to be between 7 and 8 um, percent. Now, the, your question is about whether we have fully uh, um, realized our potential my answer to that is no. I think we still we can do yet better. Uh, this is not to say that I'm dissatisfied with what we got, but I think we can do better. Uh, uh, and um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, some more uh, things that need to be done to get to somewhere, uh, you know, between eight and nine instead of between seven and eight, um, I think will be done in uh, in, in the, the next administration's term. Uh, and let's wait and see. Well, whether those things happen, and if if those things happen, I think we will see growth uh, accelerate a little bit further. Okay, but can we hope for double-digit returns uh, coming forward as far as growth rate is concerned, or is it still a far-fetched dream? Sir? Yeah. I mean, I think it's 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 certainly well within our reach. I've maintained that for a very long time. Um, we've been just uh, you know slow to do the reforms. Um, and and uh, not because of the lack of will on the part of the government certainly there is no lack of will on the part of the present government but uh, uh, the path uh, is is uh, is tough one as we saw you know in the case of farm laws for instance that uh, this step was taken for uh, taken by the government but uh, but they had to back off likewise labor laws have been uh, passed uh, uh, by the parliament but they still remain to be implemented uh, i i think you know the consensus building within a democracy takes a little bit longer than one what one can do in the authoritarian regimes um, uh, uh, as illustrated by the chinese experience you know where deng xiaoping uh, uh, once he decided to change course uh, he could move a little bit faster than we, we could in India because, you know, we need to build consensus. Uh, uh, Xiaoping didn't need to, <laughs> except, except within, you know, uh, within his administration. Yes. Uh, but, but we need to build a, uh, a consensus uh, much more widely. Um, so, uh, 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 other than that, you know, I don't see any reason why uh, uh, if other countries have grown at 9 to 10 percent, uh, uh, and not just one, but at least four or five, uh, I think we can do it too. Sir, uh, you know, at this point, uh, you also mentioned about China. A lot of our youngsters, for which we are doing this interview for social media, they would look at you and they would say that, okay, we understand that 8.4%, 7.6%, and we are aiming for 9%, and maybe uh, double-digit growth as well. But uh, is it the truest measure of the uh, way we can measure the country's growth, or should one really look at per capita income, for example, or should one look at the kind of jobs that we are getting in the country? Should one uh, look at that parameter to really assess whether we are truly growing at that level? So, you know, uh, GDP uh, is an important number uh, uh, with which a lot of the good things are correlated, but it's not the only one. Uh, uh, and uh, we as economists do look at other things. Uh, clearly, we try to measure poverty, uh, you know, whether uh, as we increase the incomes, poverty is being uh, uh, reduced in parallel and is it by being reduced uh, by enough? Um, so that's clearly one of the important things. We worry about the environment uh, because, you know, uh, uh, as we are all well aware, uh, some of the worst polluted cities are in our country. Uh, so that, that and, and obviously the air we breathe really determines uh, 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 what happens to us in the, in the medium and longer run. So we do worry about that as well. And uh, uh, in general, we worry about uh, uh, the availability of uh, well-paid jobs. Uh, so we look at everything. Uh, it's, it's not unidimensional. But we do emphasize the GDP more because a lot of the good things are correlated with the GDP. 
Since you also talked about the quality of jobs on stage, I was listening to you. I want to understand, you know, over the last uh, five, ten years, fifteen years, we've also seen a lot of youngsters aim to go outside of the country for better prospects, be it for studies or be it for jobs, for better quality life as well. Over the next decade, do you feel that we will have done enough to retain the youngsters back in <laughs> India? Oh, you know, um, I really don't think in those terms we we should certainly do as much as we can so that the youngsters will stay here but if they want to go abroad elsewhere i think that is good also uh, uh, you know uh, 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 remember that i am here but uh, i left india 50 years ago this year it will be 50 years for me uh, uh, and uh, i hope that was not a loss for india uh, so uh, so i think you know uh, in in a way uh, the, the the indians who go abroad uh, you know we all continue to love our country yes. and therefore uh, uh, we see a stake in the country and uh, we try to in our different ways try to contribute and uh, the fact that a lot of the indians live in america highly successful there um, is very useful in raising india's profile that look you know these are indians uh, this is what they can do. Uh, so it, it really feeds back into the, the, the reputation of the country. Uh, and uh, uh, also, uh, the Indians who live abroad are India's ambassadors there. Uh, uh, as diaspora, uh, particularly in a democracy like the United States, they can exercise a lot of influence. And to some degree, uh, in, uh, the, the relations that have come to exist, very warm relations between India and the United States, uh, at least the diaspora, Indian diaspora have made some contribution to that. Um, so, uh, I, 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 and, and incidentally, uh, the way the demographics are, now, you know, in the next 10 to 20 years, uh, India will be the only country uh, where population is rising, where the enormous amount of young population exists, the workforce in most other countries, including China, will be shrinking. Uh, and so we would really be the source of the jobs uh, 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 for, uh, 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 source of the workforce actually, for much of the rest of the world. Uh, so in fact, I mean, if you ask me, that is a good time to conquer the rest of the world. That's a wonderful note to end this conversation at. Many thanks, sir, and always a pleasure. And thank you so much for sparing your time for us on Business Today Television. My pleasure. My pleasure.